I have been searching for an authentic, realistic fishing simulator for a long time. And whilst the recently released Fisherman, also known as Fishing Planet Part 2, does not tick all three of those boxes for me, it certainly does tick the first two and in some areas comes very close to the third. Hello and welcome, I am Sim UK and I am grateful to Big Ben for sending me over a review copy of The Fisherman, Fishing Planet to review for you today. Now I'm not going to beat around the bush or waste your time. The Fisherman is without doubt the most brilliant fishing simulator I have ever played. Its attention to detail and its authenticity are far beyond anything that I have ever played before. And before you Fishing Planet players go into complete meltdown, I am going to have to discuss the elephant in the room. The Fisherman is essentially Fishing Planet, but instead of being an online free-to-play grinder with a heavy reliance upon pay-to-win DLC, The Fisherman is a single purchase title that includes all of the previous Fishing Planet DLC and even has a few additions thrown in for free. Now I have previously played Fishing Planet in the past and many, many people do and have highly recommended it to me as a fishing simulator. But I always felt that the deliberate grind and excessively priced DLC paywall model simply made it completely unplayable. Allow me to just compare the two right now. The Fisherman, aka Fishing Planet Part 2, plus all of the existing DLC and some exclusive content, the new map of Cruce in France, the trolling technique and four brand new fish will cost you £34.99. To own Fishing Planet is free, but to download and own all of the DLC in Fishing Planet, you will be looking at a whopping £739.68. Now that is quite a difference. And despite the fact that The Fisherman is an incredible fishing game, almost realistic enough to qualify as a fully fledged simulator, for all of those Fishing Planet players out there who over the years have spent hundreds on Fishing Planet DLC, I can only begin to empathise with your feelings on this. And worse still, you cannot even transfer your progress over. Wowza. But, as I point blank refused to buy into Fishing Planet because of the excessive price behind it, I can now look at the Fisherman in its own right without that hanging over my head. And I have to say, this game is absolutely brilliant. I have had more fun and learnt more about fishing whilst playing this game than I ever did fishing in real life when I was a teenager. This is off the hook good. But, there are some aspects of The Fisherman which I'm not so keen on, and there's quite a lot to discuss. So what exactly is The Fisherman Fishing Planet? Essentially, The Fisherman is a sports simulation experience that also provides a relaxed, single or even multiplayer fishing experience in a way that few other titles have really managed. All the equipment is well modelled and vast enough to keep you interested long term. We're talking about motorboats, kayaks, rests, rods, reels, baits, lures, feed mixtures which you can actually mix yourself. There are more than a thousand items overall and to add to the immersion, sometimes when you go to the shop there might be a sale on or they might be promoting a new item. Honestly, it's insanely detailed and incredibly rewarding. The fishing techniques that are on offer here are also incredibly authentic. Essentially, you have four different fishing disciplines to utilize in order to catch over 143 different well-modeled fish with realistic behaviors. You have float fishing, spinning, bottom fishing, and now, as part of the fisherman, you have trolling, which is the new bespoke fishing style available to the fisherman title only. It's an incredibly immersive experience, with 19 lake and river environments on offer, each with their own unique set of characteristics, fauna, flora, and even ambiance. 
You will get caught on rocks, reeds, and other such nasty snags, and then you will have to try and free your line without breaking your rod or your reel, or just accept the inevitable and cut your losses. There's also a day and night cycle, as well as weather, with each in-game hour taking approximately 15 minutes of real time. And you can expand, adapt, and specialize your gameplay experience in whatever direction it is that you decide. And with a variety of fishing techniques available for each discipline, it's easy to see how this game can capture your imagination and entice you deeply into its chilly waters. And it's not even just the experienced fishermen who will get immersed like this. The guided and progressive and adaptive tutorial is absolutely insanely well done. And the game expands in the direction that you want to take. It won't be long before you are literally considering entering yourself into competitions and tournaments. And I have to say the community is absolutely fantastic too. I've already spent countless hours with complete strangers sharing and comparing techniques, lures and baits. I can see why Fishing Planet was so appealing to keen fishermen and now that wonderful experience is available here to everyone at a price which I think is reasonable and fair. There it is. Oh nice. That's not bad at all. 19.4, 2.6 pound cutthroat trout. Now it's not all plain sailing. A lot of the waterways and equipment will only be available to you after you have ranked up past a certain level. I've never really been a fan of this approach, but even worse than this are these coins called bait coins. As the name suggests, it is a legacy implementation from the Fishing Planet days, and it's kind of essentially what they used in order to entice people back to the game and kind of go along that pay to win approach. The level of grind in the fishermen has by all accounts been dramatically reduced. It's a quarter of what it was in comparison to Fishing Planet. And in the opening few days of playing, you will be able to complete a vast number of challenges, especially if you are following along with the tutorial, which I highly recommend to you as it is absolutely excellent. As a reward for your endeavors, you will have items unlocked and even have some given to you for free. Enough items indeed to be a little overwhelmed with the options and varieties on offer. But some of the best gear can only be obtained with bait coins, which is not really a paywall, but it is a grind. Now, it would make sense if you could obtain bait coins by paying real money, and as these items can significantly help you in competitions, that would certainly be pay to win. Incidentally, uh, competitions are, I think, the best place to earn bait coins until you get later in the game. But as it is at the moment, you cannot buy bait coins with real money. So I'm completely confused as to why they have even retained this bait coin legacy grind implementation. It just makes no sense to me at all. It seems that old habits die hard and whilst Fishing Planet LLC promise the game will receive seasonal events and free updates, there's a large part of me that feels this is going to coincide some way with more bait coin pay to win grindy type stuff. Now that's mere speculation and it might never actually come to pass. Already they have reduced the price of some of their packs to a more reasonable 2000 bait coins which as you progress in the game later on could take you anywhere from a week to a month to accumulate. In the early days that's going to take you an awful lot longer. For me it's a little disappointing. From my perspective it's the cost of gear, the financial outlay of gear, which should be the limitation to progress. It's not this made up currency or even the ranking system that should limit you from being able to buy particular items. I will openly admit right now that any reasonably priced DLC that comes out for this game, I will likely be buying it. Because the game itself is absolutely fantastic, but the Bitcoin thing? 
could heavily dissuade me from even playing this game. I just don't understand what the point of the bait coin is. So whilst money is accumulated pretty quickly, you will also have to mitigate the cost of travel and fishing licenses. I think these licenses are a one-time purchase for now, but you will need to pay extra in order to stay for more than a single day. At least I think that's how it works. This is one area that I'm still ironing out in my head, and as Fishing Planet had a time-limited implementation for licensing, I'm a little bit cautious not to say that at some point you may have to buy a license again. In all honesty, if a license lasted for a year, an in-game year, then I think maybe I'd be okay with that because it's quite realistic. I believe that's how it works in the real world and it helps uh, fishermen and fisheries to keep their fish stock at a reasonable level. Either way, rolling up to a newly unlocked waterway unprepared is potentially financially fatal. All of that easily earned cash at the beginning can easily lure you into this mistaken idea that cash and equipment is easily attainable. It's not. If you go to a new waterway, just for a look, as I have done, then that look will cost you heavily. The idea is to catch enough fish to cover the cost of the travel, the equipment and the licenses. But at the beginning of the game, you will be forgiven for wasting cash unknowingly. On site, there is a shop. It's a significantly limited version of the global shop. And should you break a line, the chances of you being able to buy an exact replacement is significantly lowered as a result. And, even if it is available, it's likely to be vastly more expensive, especially if you're paying for it with Baitcoin. By the way, anything that is bought with Baitcoin must be repaired and replaced with Baitcoin. Now I'll admit, I have wasted vast sums of cash just visiting locations to check them out. So please, if you're going to buy this game, be warned. In addition to this, I also entered a couple of tournaments. Now the first one was fishing for trout, and as I have had some significant success fishing for trout, I felt pretty confident that I could win some cash here. So I invested heavily in preparation, only to discover that the competition was cancelled due to a low turnout. I was disappointed and somewhat financially stricken. That's actually a side of the game I think is brilliant. I mean, what could be more realistic than that? How many fishermen have got that same real life story? I like that kind of thing. I think that's what should be implemented. I think the Bitcoin thing should just be removed. It really has no place in this game, as far as I can see. Unless, at some point, they're thinking maybe they can start selling you Baitcoin for real cash further down the line. That being said, the systematic approach to fishing is where this game ticks an awful lot of boxes for me. The systematic preparation, setup, casting and reeling are just fantastic. The battles are always unique, they're unpredictable and quite often exciting. The stories that I could tell you about the ones that got away. Oh man. It might be the case that the fight in the fish is relevant to the rank of the fish and not really a carefully balanced system of rig versus species versus weight. For me, it's simply too early to tell, but I can say that I quickly became able to tell just how much a fish weighed based on the speed and aggressiveness of the catch. I can also guarantee you will be elated when you finally catch that elusive one. I'm not convinced that the fish ecosystems are 100% dynamic. It seems, and I have read, that certain spots will yield more results than others, and this is a bit of a shame if it is true. I hope it's something that will change later on down the line. Having fish persistently living in the water is far more realistic than fish spawning on demand. I have noticed some significant FPS drop when fishing too, and I wonder if it is related to this. So long story short then, if it's not already too late to say that, how do I sum the Fisherman Fishing Planet up? I would say categorically at this price, this is an absolutely brilliant opportunity. It's an absolutely astoundingly brilliant game. I am so 
unbelievably impressed in this, with this game in so many areas and I heartily highly recommend it for experienced fishermen and those with little or even no experience of fishing whatsoever. It really has opened my eyes and I can't foresee myself playing any other fishing game whilst this is available. The only thing that could possibly dissuade me from this game is what they're planning on doing with Baitcoin. If the developers took the decision that Baitcoin was totally, totally unnecessary in this environment, then I would 100% back them. And if they released DLCs with more fisheries, more fish, more equipment, then I would likely buy those. I'd be very surprised if I didn't. Unless they started pricing the DLCs at a ridiculous level, then I would be enticed to invest in this game because it is so, so, so good. And that's about all I can tell you really about the Fisherman Fishing Planet. I hope this review has been helpful for you. I highly recommend you take a look at this. If you're not entirely convinced at this point, then maybe as an alternative, you could take a look at Fishing Planet, the free version, and just get an idea of what the fishing is like. It's a little bit complicated at times, but the fisherman really, really has, if there's one thing the fisherman has nailed, it's the tutorial and the challenges and the tournaments and the community. I mean, it really is good. This game will take you by the hand and lead you from knowing nothing to knowing pretty much everything you need to know about fishing in a really short space of time. It's incredible. It really is incredible. And I, for one, absolutely love this game. But just to reiterate it, I hate Baitcoin. Get rid of it. We don't need it here. Thank you for watching. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this review. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Goodbye for now.